What's the fastest way to create a round object in Fusion 360? Yeah, so when it comes to creating round objects in Fusion, what you want to know is if it's a cylinder, an extrude is awesome. An extrude even has some other capabilities. So you can extrude and you can add a taper angle. So you can create a cone shape with an extrude. So it's not that limited. But when you get to complexity beyond this, for example, I have this sketch of a cup and I want to create a round object. You can see this rounded object comes out really fast and this be a lot harder to do with these rounded edges with this kind of complex fillet inside all done in one simple sketch. Another simple example I like is the layer cake where I have a series of steps that are all combined into one. And this would be very easy to do with an, a revolve, but the challenge is you'd have to do effectively three sketches and three extrudes. And so this is where a revolve is also another great fit because we can revolve this profile around this axis and get this shape built really quickly. And what's great for the future of this design is that we can edit it really easily. Go back to that one sketch and you can manipulate the dimensions, change the sketch shape and overall drive the entire design with one sketch instead of many sketches and many features. And then of course the example of a mountain bike tire and wheel. So you've got the rim profile that you can sketch along with the tire profile that can then be revolved 360 degrees. What's the shortcut key for revolve? Well, when I look, the revolve actually doesn't have a shortcut key, but you can easily assign one. So go to the dots and you can do the change keyboard shortcut and we could maybe try R, for example, and you can see that that conflicts with an existing shortcut. So a lot of times using just a simple letter might already have something assigned. So rather than, uh, you know, override that, I'm going to do shift R. It looks like that'll work great. And now when I look even at the revolve, it'll even call out what shortcut you've assigned it. What are the important steps when doing a revolve? Yeah, so when it comes to doing a revolve, let's say we're starting from scratch, you want to just sketch the shape that you want. And I like to think that I'm only sketching half of it. And then I need to think about where the axis on which this is about to turn, or uh, we're going to you know, solve this feature 360 degrees. So when I go to revolve, my axis I plan is for this line. Now, can can you use other axes? Absolutely. You can use the uh, reference geometry like uh, this axis that happens to sit where these planes intersect. I could use one of these other axes um, as well. And then you can even create additional sketch geometry that you can revolve around. So I'm going to revolve. I'll choose this profile. And then the axis is now this line. And it's turning about that. Now, uh, let's introduce an additional axis with maybe a sketch line. So if I go back into our sketch, right click, edit sketch, I'm going to just sketch a line out in space and that will create some space between our solution. And we go to the revolve. This is the profile that it's turning and it's going around this axis. You can see that introduces a hole. The other important step is filling out this revolve information. So what you've seen me do mainly is a full uh, extent or you're doing a complete 360 degrees. And we can also solve it just to full where it doesn't actually ask you for 360. And then partial if we want to do, you know, 175 or 180, it's only going to solve partially. And then of course, do we want to uh, solve this where it joins up with another body or uses any of these other operations? Thanks to Kati for sponsoring this Fusion 360 beginner series. If, if you're looking for an expert when it comes to Autodesk products, whether that's moving engineering data to the cloud or getting one-on-one -on -one support, be sure to check out Kativ. Their link is down below. What should I avoid when it comes to doing revolves? So the thing I've seen beginners do the most with revolve is, let's say you're doing something like a collet and you sketch the shape 
And then you come in and effectively just almost do a sketch mirror and you get it all even and the same. And then you try to revolve this one. That's what I've seen uh, beginners do. So they're trying to revolve this profile, and even though they've drawn it on both sides, it's not really clear what they really want to Fusion 360. So instead, I like to think about I'm only sketching half of it, and then using the revolve command, I do the profile around this, pro this line, and then, yeah, we'll do a full. And so it's solving all the way around. That's what I like to think about. And another gotcha that um, I see a lot is people just not understanding how to introduce distance between the object itself. So think about um, a sphere, right? So the sphere is a great example of that rule I just mentioned. Now I'm breaking that rule. Now fusion may still solve it for you. It's just I want to let you know that it is overkill. So in this case, I could trim it away or make it construction geometry. But I'm going to revolve this profile along, along this axis, and it does solve. Great. So we have this, this solution. Terrific. Now what I want to introduce is maybe I want to solve a circle that uh, goes around a large axis. So what we do in that case is like we were doing earlier, is we're going to sketch a line out in space. This line out in space is now what this will spin about 360 degrees. And you can even do, if this were a construction line, I can dimension from the line to here. I can right click and make this a diameter. And you can see that it's gonna double that for me. So now I understand the diameter of this whole revolve is 569, right? So now if I finish this out and we'll delete the feature and we'll solve it again, I'm gonna sweep this entire circle around this axis. And I said sweep because it looks really similar. It's almost the same concept, a profile that follows a round path. It's a revolve that happens to solve around this axis. So if you introduce an axis away from your main object, it's going to create this gap or this hole or this space. Can I use a revolve to do a cut? Absolutely. So, you know, back to that, you know, circle example where I want to come in and introduce uh, a sphere that maybe is going to cut everything out. So I'll sketch a circle and I can do half of it or I can just leave it as is. I'll create an axis. I'll even add the sketch relationship or constraint. Line it up. And what I'm going to do is I'll solve a revolve. So now I'm going to do a revolve. I'm going to do this profile that goes around this axis. And I'm going to use the operation of cut, not join or others. I'm going to do that cut. And you can see it's creating this uh, sphere in space that's, all, that's performing a cut and not adding information or adding geometry. You can see it cuts it out. So do you like to use revolves over extrudes? I think I use revolve anytime it's a round object with the exception of a simple cylinder, um, then I'm usually using revolve. Even this cone, I would probably revolve this because then I'd have a sketch that's easier to edit for me instead of a feature that I have to go back and edit and play with the dimensions here. Uh, I would prefer to have that sketch of a revolve if it were me, but even they're very close in this example. But when you get into these types of shapes, that's where uh, a revolve is just so much easier to, to manage and to edit in your future designs. Hey, for more Fusion 360 videos, check out this playlist.